with the launch of the V10 compression this week. I'm really excited to have on board Andrew Fowler. Sheepy, as he is known affectionately by most of the athletes around the world that use our compression, was the man that sat with me on day one and helped me design a garment when most designers told me that that garment was impossible to make. Now, Sheep, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Let's rip in. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Welcome to Body Science HQ, the world of fit, happy, healthy. And I'm throwing on the end of that a massive V10 compression. And I've got the man who single-handedly will put his hand up and say that he designed the first ever Body Science garment. His name is Andrew Fowler. He has worked in our brand since... 2004. I have no fact sheet here. But 2004. 2004. So I first met Sheepy. He was an angry cyclist. That's how I'm going to put it down. But he was designing, and he's Sheepy, so he's designing sheep cover, sheep Sheep's covers for cars. Sheep cover. Sheep, yeah. yeah. And I just met this guy and he had so much energy and I'm sitting there with him one day and I'm going, oh, I can't get someone to design these garments the way we want to do it. We want to wrap around muscle groups and do things differently. And he just said, I can do that. And I sort of went, wow, that's a really interesting to say. What do you do? And the story is sheepy was basically people would bring their car and, and back in the days when it was cool to have sheep covered you don't see that anymore at all do no. you no no sheep covered sheep skin, skin co- seat covers <laughs> it just sounds so funny every time i say it like and you explained to me there were no patterns anymore so you actually had to look at a seat and design a pattern because moving on to chair like people paid a lot of money for those things back then they had to be tight snug and you just said i can do that on a human so we we grabbed glenn workman Yes, we did. Who was at QAS at the time, was working with a whole lot of athletes we were working at. And I explained to him what I wanted to do. And he looked at me and said, that doesn't make sense. But we did it. We went round muscle groups. We did a whole lot of things. Sheepy created a garment that nobody else could. I went to a lot of people in the early days in this space. Everyone in compression back then was making straight seams down inside the leg. He's been a bit lazy and gone back. That space just between us, like a little chat between us. But no, I'm only joking. That garment has ruled in a lot of places around the world. It has been a very, very popular popular compression garment to all you people out there that have still got version one two three four or five please buy one Nathan and I've got kids. Um, I get stories every day, like they just don't split, they don't break, they don't do this. You guys make them too good. I only need to buy one pair. And mate, I just want to, I just want to congratulate you. Like our V10 launching this week, minimal changes to it. Like we, we, we take a lot of time talking with athletes on little one mils here and two mils there, and this needs to change and that needs to change. And the difference between a V9 and a V10 probably to a lot of people doesn't look a lot, but mate, it's been six months of work to get that garment where it's at. For everybody out there, like why does it take you so long? <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, well, that's a pretty good question. <laughs> I better think of something quick. Listen, a lot goes into it right from the early days um, when we made up, obviously we made white garments. Mm. We put them on someone, they stood on a table, we drew muscle groups up now, straightforward patterns. If anyone's sitting at home, they can have a look at their shirt, they can have a look at their shorts they're wearing or, or jeans or anything like that. That's just a single seam, just mm. straight lines. So everyone has this conception in their head that you start with this base straight seam type of garment and off you go from there. So. When you do it all and you change and you're trying to do muscle groups and the anatomy of the body changes and you're trying to stick to a formula that gives you proper compression, which is your millimetres of mercury rating and all those things, stretches of fabrics and and, and all the rest of it, quite a lot goes into actually making it so that it's going to fit the majority of people or everyone that fits into those styles or that that size guide Yep. and creating the benefits, medical benefits that compression gives you. We put a lot of development, obviously, in the early days and initially into the fabric and that was a big thing. We I think, still use that same fabric yep, today. Yeah, yep. we've done our odd little modifications to it. And at that stage when we bought that fabric out, there was nothing on the market, nothing ever like that. And it took a long, long, long time before our competitors even started to use something similar. Mm. And it was quite funny because we watched it and we watched it and everything else and, and then they started to change seams and different things like that. So You don't see a straight garment seam at all anymore. Nah, the whole world's rare. changed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, Are you working for other people? people? Uh, not always. <laughs> no, no, no. Just myself. Got a little shop on the side. So creating a pattern 
that has curves and round shapes and everything that's still going to fit properly is actually quite technical. Uh, quite a lot goes into it. And obviously we use a lot of, uh, we use the prints on them. So the, the, the gel that we use is a very supportive uh, application. Obviously, the, so it helps create um, a lot more compression because we're graduated compression. And if you increase that, it makes it more compression. If you decrease it, it can create less compression. So all of a sudden it changes the whole size <coughs> the of the whole garment, garment and the pattern and everything else. And you know, I guess a lot of people don't understand that when we when we lay a table up there's as much as i hate this there's a fair bit of waste mm -hmm. because we run panels on certain angles yep because of are you ready you're going to define what warp and weft is are you in this are you ready for this or Far not out. so because when you look at the way that a piece of material reacts it will respond differently to the angle that you hold it on if you perform the same stretch test and change the angle of the material mm -hmm. it performs very differently and for for us we spend a lot of time post worko trying to get that right with running athletes we made oh how many pairs did we make oh, in wow. the early days like so many i mean we've got the science there now we, we're pretty and we've used the same material bar at a few and we'll talk about some things we've added to it to make it more valuable but we'll, let's talk about the material we actually picked that material in the early days because it was used the polyester was used in hospital applications for people's bed, yep, sores, bed sores to pull the crap away from the bed sore yep. and we just thought well if it can do that it can pull moisture off an athlete and i mean yep. and then we did more testing obviously because the moisture wicking is inherent in the yarn it's not an additive yeah so a lot of brands out there they put like a chemical treatment on their material but that washes off washes with time off, yep. ours is inherent in the material, which means it doesn't wash off. And it's channeled, so it, it flows the moisture. Mm. So nice, I should yeah. use that. Yeah, like yeah. It so flows it flows the moisture. Yeah, it flows the moisture, so it definitely moves it away from the body. <laughs> a lot of people don't like the word moisture, so this isn't going to mm. be a popular podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right because our compression keeps you dry. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, there yeah. You go. So you've been with Body Science for seventeen years. Yep. And your operations manager, you got a much bigger yes. role than our compression garments now. Yep. And you've got some really cool designers and peeps underneath you there. We still mm. sew them in-house. We do. At Bell, and that's another little headache for you because it's really easy to order them from China and bring them in and land them with a box and a barcode, but we mm. don't do that. We go through all the process. Australian made. Yeah. And that's something you're really proud of. I mean, you haven't pushed very hard. Oh, there's been a few years where you've said, Greg, please take these to China. But the reality is I think you actually love it because you still do some cool projects for people. We, yep. we don't we don't just sit on our laurels and go, here's our compression garment, wear it. Like, like recently, I could throw five projects you've done that are really unique to sport and athletes in that space. Mm. Well, I've got two today that Pico's given me. Yeah. So let me guess, um, sternum. No, 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 no. We do um, a lot of sternum stuff. <laughs> uh, sleeves for the LA team because they play on AstroTurf and stuff oh, in America. Yep. So they're burning, getting skin burns and everything from being tackled on it. Yep. So the power sleeves, which yep. back in the day we did. So I got a few of those coming through. And um, also looking at um, just some custom tights for a very well-known female basketballer. Yeah, nice. Yeah, because they're not normal. Two metres tall. Yeah, exactly. So there's a little bit that goes into kind of making that work. And of course, you said before the sternums. And we've done some really cool stuff in that core short area as well. Like a, there's not many NRL games you watch these days with teams that are with us and not with us that don't have a body science garment on them. Yep, and every team orders them. Mm. And the amount that we go through a year just for football teams is amazing. It astonishes me, actually. So it's a very uh, valued product amongst um, all the rugby league teams and other sporting teams uh, um, in Australia. We've also supplied a lot of runners that wear them as well, not just to aid in recovery if they've got a bit of a twinge or different things like that. It's one of our more popular products is definitely the core shorts. And it's it's a really interesting thing, too, because they've, they've sort of become the underwear of sport. Yeah, yeah they have they're very very popular i haven't made too many changes to them over the years because i don't really know works. what direction you go it took so long to develop them and then when we have kind of it hasn't really played out the way we've wanted it to play out so we've kind of stuck with what we've got everyone loves them um it just continues on it's a bit like our half quad shorts that's it definitely our biggest seller it's our most popular thing you see them in every single game on the weekend on tv with every single team they wear them do you still love that when you see it yeah i do yeah, yeah i always and i take note every time i get in there and look at it and see if the logo is right or <laughs> what's wrong with the pant or if there's something or you know and and obviously over time as uh trends change like in their playing shorts so they've made them longer and longer and it covers our logo <laughs> <laughs> whereas they used to be really short when we started they were really short playing shorts yeah, and well, they stuck right out and the nrl hated that well everyone was doing the knee length in the early days and yeah you know, we went, no, we need to halve these. No, nah, and um, that seemed to work. Mm. I don't think anyone really, you know, if you're a runner, I suppose, it fully encases 
your muscle groups, your hamstring and your quad, your main one. So I understand the benefits for that. Um, but for the players, obviously, gave them less to grab at. Obviously, when you're getting tackled, kept them dry, supportive, everything else. So they just found it worked. The guys even talk about slaps. Like that. It's, a, it's a better feeling when you yep. get slapped with a compression versus no compression. And- yeah, well, I remember when we first came out with our long sleeves, actually, and we sent them out to players, uh, the compression. I think it might have been Willie. You said he felt it was a different impact when he was getting hit from it. So, and Did obviously- you being hit by Willie Mason? The yeah. impact would be massive. Yeah, no. <laughs> and it's a little bit different. It's a particular choice of wearing the top. Obviously, it's a different feeling to wearing an undergarment. Uh, but they did Not say- Not science around that space. No, nah, no. Nah, but they said they did feel definite benefits in recovery and just those soft tissue from the impacts and things like that and just yeah. the different feelings. So, um, yeah, we took something out of that. You've, you've tailored that short to be a short for- And Kenny Wallace work with you on this. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> it's all about Tom Green these days. <laughs> we love you, Kenny. Yeah, we do. And uh, in relation to what we call paddle pants and they are everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And they last too long. But yeah, no, we've made a lot of paddle pants. Um, They've been to a lot of Olympics, those pants. They have been to a lot of Olympics. Yeah. So it's unfortunately, you don't see them in the boat, but mm. um, all the athletes sitting in there wearing them. You, you get know, the pictures sent to you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that was another product too. A lot of development went into that. There's a couple of different varieties because there's obviously these guys spend a lot of time in their craft. So they and have all seats move this. Yeah, yeah the solid seats, swivel seats, yeah, yeah. Uh, different things like that. So that's another popular one. Oh, I think one of the ones for me that was probably the most rewarding was the bobsleigh team. Yeah, that was a cool project. Yeah, quite amazing because there was a definite, uh, and you can see it on YouTube, uh, the Great Britain bobsleigh team at an event. Uh, it was the women's team, I think it was, and they were pushing to start oh, the and the suit split straight <laughs> open. Um, well, yeah. Back in those days when they hit me, this is a little bit of a funny story if I can tell it. It's your podcast, but we'll no, talk about me for a while. I remember getting the phone call saying, will you make us a bobsled suit? And I thought he was taking the piss at first because yeah. who comes to Australia to get a bobsled suit designed? No. So just chatting away and pretty much what had happened is Adidas hadn't changed the tech in 17 years. Is sort of, if anyone out there works for Adidas, they may have. I'm just telling you what I was told. And they came to us and said, would you design a bobsled suit? We've looked at all the compression brands in the world. You're the brand we want to work with. And I've gone, cool. How many clubs is that? And they've gone, no, there's only one club. And I'm thinking, okay, it's getting harder for me to say I want to do a bobsled project right now. And then I go, okay, well, how many teams? You know, when you join a touch football club, there, there'll be 200 teams. I say, oh, how yeah, many teams? Yeah. And he goes, two. I'm going, really? He goes, yeah, the men's and the, and the women's. women's. <laughs> I've gone, oh, okay. How many athletes? He goes, 12. And I'm thinking, wow, I've got to create a bobsled project here at Body Science for 12 suits that we're giving someone. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to chat with um, Nathan and Sheree about it. Pico's pissing himself laughing, going, oh, if he gets this through, he's a champion. Like, because Sheree's a gatekeeper. She's a finance part of the business. We got it through like it in it and the australian government actually backed us on it they did a little bit yep. of work with us because they were really excited about the innovation project we had going there and it was really interesting that and and i'm not going to use any names but i remember they said do you want a bobsled suit and i went no way if you give me that sheep is just going to copy it and i said i want to make a body science bobsled suit mm-hmm. and then that was the end of me. I just said, Shibi, you got to make a bobsled suit. And you, I remember your face was like, okay, he's taking the piss now. Like, Yeah, I've got that look. <clears throat> yeah, you gave that look. And the really exciting part from it was the whole team really got excited by making a bobsled suit. They really embraced it. And yeah. we did the Terminator one for them. <clears throat> yeah, we did a couple of yeah, versions. I wish I kept one of those. I know. Some of the um, artwork, like Jared Bell, yep. he's running Mr. Consistent now, but he pulled out a piece of artwork that, I, that, that could be on a Hollywood set. Like yep. it was epic what he did in that. They- Space. loved it. I think it's still got it, but yeah, they loved it. Mm, do you still have? Uh, no, I don't have that. Can one. you make another no, one? No. Well, you remember how I used I'd to like test them? I'd like the boardroom. Can... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, because we can't get a bobsled athlete or go to a bobsled, we what do you call that? Pallet jack. Pallet jack. So we've turned the pallet jack round backwards <laughs> and rode it through the and warehouse. We rode it through the warehouse, just testing, trying to test loads and all the things that will go with it. And look, one of the exciting things from that project is, you know, I got, I got the guys. The guys ended up getting a bronze medal at the Olympics. Mm. Um, they went from th- ooh, 34 or 43 in the world. It's one of those. They worked with uh, McLaren on the helmet. Yeah, they did. We got one downstairs. Yep, they gave me one of those, which is awesome. Yeah, it's wicked. So they worked with McLaren on the helmet and they worked with us on compression and we reduced injuries. We increased speed mm. um, and basically it was one of those projects that we saw through to the end and it was just, it was unreal. Yep, it was. It was lots of fun. Yep, yep. it made them feel really special <laughs> Yeah, because the time and effort was getting put into them and and they felt like they were covering all their bases so it made all the athletes lift 
Mm. And people so. wouldn't understand the difference between making a single garment and making a connected garment mm. and one that actually had to work in a bobsled. Was, yep. There was a lot of fun. Cell Birdie spent a lot of time in the science on that space as well, yep. which was there was a lot of cool things happening at that time. Yep. And compression was on fire back then. Like, yeah, how, was. how big was it? Wow. It was huge. Wow. So, yeah. We were pumping out some serious numbers every day. Yeah. What, what we, we would have had 17 machinists back then, do you reckon? Yeah, it was 15. Yeah. 15? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and everyone in Q&A, the cutting team, everything like that. So, yeah, it was huge. It and really we still was. we still make compression garments here at Burley today. Yeah, we still do. That's something I'm really proud of. Yep. Yeah. Well, a I lot physically of the... don't have to do any part on it. But I got to put that forward now. I'm really proud of the team and what they do. No, I still jump on. I was up there before doing some cutting and different things, just for special projects. I can't leave my hands out of that. So. And I love it whenever it's R and D time. You're like, we go to Greg, stand on the table. Let's do what we've got to do. And we go through all the science and all the things we can yep. find and all the fun stuff. And it's it really is a fun part of body science. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's a fair bit of time that goes into it. So that's the hardest part, I think, for both of us is just finding that time and focus to be able to do it. But we still manage to do it because it's something different. Mm, you know, good. It's part of the DNA. Hi, I'm Tom Green, Olympic champ from Tokyo. And if you want the best tasting protein bars on the market, you should try the new Body Science Moose Range. Greg, you better be testing these. Mate, they're getting drug tested. Got you covered. So, mate, 17 years at Body Science, that, yep. that makes you the million dollar kid. Like, you've, you've, you've hit some big numbers over 17 years, I can only assume. Yeah, yeah. Hey? <laughs> A few. Really? <laughs> I sit over here and I look at you and I go, wow. 17 years is a long time to – but you've, you've had a – a really cool career path here too, haven't you? Yep. Yeah, certainly have. Um, starting obviously with the compression back in the day, uh, but then from there it led into as we expanded and staff came on because when we first started talking, uh, there was you and Hoax mm. and basically Shree part time and Nathan coming on. That was that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Then I came in and yeah, we were doing that on the side, so that was pretty good. But as we grew, then it needed to be warehouses, and I love that space. You know, I love the as much as you, you know. What I truly that. love in this space with you, and I'm mm. gonna. I'm going to tell the story is I've jammed you in some shitty warehouses and I know that because you know in the early days body science you know wasn't what it is today and we survived but the funny thing is brands come to you now to look at warehousing and how we do it yeah when, when they've got these massive big warehouses and they just don't know how to put a warehouse together no no it's got to be efficient you got to look at efficiencies you can just blow money if you want to on something big like anything, really. It's got to be efficient. It's got to work. It's, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, but I just love, I love machinery and construction and things like that. So yeah, I felt that was a pretty natural progression um, just to start building those infrastructures and everything else. And I don't like spending money, as you know. So um, <laughs> that made us, both of us, always butt heads because you like spending <laughs> I like spending money. <laughs> I had my own business. So I treat it like it's my own business. I always have treated it like it's my own business. So that's the difference. I've never felt like I'm an employee such. I feel like I'm part of body science. I have so. a lot of people come up to me and say they met the owner sheepy, like yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't used that line for years. <laughs> I love it. Most people think I'm your brother. <laughs> Same hairdresser. Yeah. So, it. mate, what's what's been some of the fun things you've done at Body Science over that? I mean, 17 years. Oh, wow, the stories we could put together. Well, crazy. I miss when we first started. Uh, we used to go for a swim at lunchtime. So we did, too. We did yeah. didn't we? Wow. Yeah. Greg went to a big office and I had a little shed and we we're like, oh, we've made it. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. We go for a swim at lunchtime. And Taj, I think, was still in nappies. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'd go home, go for a swim, summertime, uh, lunchtime. But yeah, no, listen, we've, we've seen a lot of good and a lot of bad over that time. I mean, everything's up and down in business. Uh, we've seen massive expansion, uh, staffing, everything else, industry going up and down. Um, a lot of the better things for me, obviously, is just watching the evolution of, obviously, the body sciences journey. So um, I think we're stuck true, or body sciences and, and you guys a credit to obviously sticking true to your values of what it is and, and continuing along that path. And I think at the end of the day, that separated us from a lot of other brands because when I first come on board and I didn't know anything about nutrition, sausage rolls, you know, <laughs> that was my nutrition. Everyone thought of nutrition back then is for bodybuilders. And we, there was always that involvement in football and they needed nutrition. So that was kind of the pathway we started to go off. Now there was hundreds of brands and it was all about bodybuilding, bodybuilding. And as the journey went on, we still have that affinity and um, partnership with football and stayed true to that because that's the performance side. And then seeing all the athletes 
that have come along. So then obviously the Olympians. Uh, and for me, that I really enjoy listening and getting to know um, Olympic athletes mm. because they're, they're different to, say, a team or some of them are team players, obviously, uh, but that's different to a paid professional. So some of them obviously earn some money and some of them earn some great money. Their commitment, just their drive and their commitment and just that inner belief that they have in themselves is uh, with some of the ones that have come in here. And obviously they're competitive as hell. Hmm. So to meet those, I always find them very intriguing. I give them a hard time, love giving them a hard time, <laughs> you know, but they're always really grounded people. Yeah. They're very grounded. They have committed their life to it. They're focused. They're really driven. Um, whereas you find, and this is no not detrimental to footballers or anything, but some of them have, thinks it's their God-given right, you know, um, they're earning good money, you know, and I've had a real buzz out of meeting some of those as well. Don't get me wrong, especially when we um, initially with the Titans, the original team, you know, the rat, Matty Rogers, Scotty Prince still comes in. Yep. Um, those guys, Greg Bird, all along those kind of players, yeah, things like too. that, meeting Sammy Burgess. Um, and I love my football. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. So meeting players like that's been that's been a real buzz, but I really get into those that Olympic athlete. So nutrition, we stuck with the football side of things because that was our DNA. But then branching off obviously the the testing of things, um, sticking ethical to to what goes into the products and sticking along the guidelines that's required and and going more into obviously there's different ranges, but into the the lifestyle so the normal everyday person and the industry from thinking that you only had to go to the gym to take a product to now it's an everyday thing and accommodating that and right up to even things that help you mentally mm. you know and s sustain you every day through your everyday thing so i feel we've found our path and we're stuck along that path and created that space and and we haven't wavered from that yep you know, and obviously there's different rules and regulations that come into act for imported brands. And, and I've always hated anything that's imported anyway, because I believe that our country was built on what we made. We had a lot of smart people here and you see it around the world with different industries and things. They, Australians go overseas and make things. Okay. Seeing imported stuff coming in and just letting them bring crap in and people thinking because it's American or whatever it is, it's great and it's not. And, you know, some are. Obviously, mm. we've always stuck to that quality. We've stuck to our path. And that's definitely the one part of the watching that journey fold out over time has been really rewarding for me. And, you know, and that's what's kept me here over that time is just knowing what we believe in and we've stuck to it. So. That, that's um, great hearing. I mean, obviously, you're a leader here now. And without that type of values and visions, nothing works anyway. Just stepping so. back a bit, you, you know, you mentioned Princey and yep. Steve Moore. Oh, Moore. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember Steve Moore. I didn't mention him. Yeah. yeah. You, you've had some really cool relationships with these athletes over yep. time. Do, do you... What do you what do you think about the athlete side outside of the Olympians and, and, and their values and where they're going? What do you think about like Steve Moore would ring up and go, I need six pairs of green shorts? Yep. You know, and that I saw Steve the other day, good bloke. Oh, I'm super wrong. From a perspective of you in that role of stopping everything you're doing to to cater to these athletes, do you yep. do you think we've made good decisions in that space or Yes, we have. You know, I think we've done our time. But yeah, you form those relationships and People might go, oh, you're giving them stuff, but, or you're doing, you know, you're handing that out or doing whatever. But at the end of the day, that forms relationships and those relationships spread out. It's that word of mouth. Those people stay in that industry. They stay in that team. They stay in that sport. And, and it's always, it comes back again going, oh, we got told by such and such. And that's, and that's the journey we've taken, obviously, and we've stayed, you know, involved in sport. And, and involved with these people. And that's, yeah, creating relationships builds relationships. And I think that's been a really strong part of what we've done. Yeah. Who's who's one of the most influential athletes to change you? And look, it could be an under six kid that walked in that's a world champion or whatever. I'm not looking for the biggest name. Who, who have you met that you really went, wow, like that was something special? So the person who's influenced me the most, obviously Kenny comes straight to mind. Kenny Wallace. Um, Kenny Wallace, great bloke, great banter. Uh, that's for sure. I just like his, just his humbleness, but his outlook, his, his loyalty, yeah, his drive, that. just everything. He's so fair about everything that he does. So when he, he talks, um, just about everything, it's his passion and, and, and 
that competitiveness, that drive, and his decisions just always seem fair and and they involve everyone, you know. Um, obviously, he's had job roles change lately and there's a few little projects we worked on together and, and it was definitely for him about involvement and team and, and, you know, no one's bigger than the sport, no one's bigger than anyone else. And and so that that made me think a lot. Um, I just had another one at the top of my head that was a bit like that. But oh, listen, we've had a few come through that people like maybe someone with disabilities. We've had a couple come through, obviously. That well, do you want um, to tell the story? Yeah. So mm-hmm. where I can't think of their name or what they were, but they did have uh, some kind of disability. Um, actually, one of the other people come in, maybe not necessarily an athlete, uh, like John Curtis. Um, <laughs> Good old JC. Yeah, love JC. These people, they just they keep moving forward. They're positive. Uh, they don't look back. They don't have a disability. That's just how they are. Mm-hmm. They just and they just deal with what they've got. Do you remember the, the day best. that I called you in and there was a guy with eighty percent burns to his body? That was from Bali, was it? We walk out, fingers to toes, around the head, a full mm-hmm. medical bandage. Yep. On and I remember looking at you and me and saying, "I need to get this off." I've been wearing it for eight months mm. or so. I need you to make me compression garments. Yep. And we're talking like balaclava style heads all the way through. And yep. And I remember looking at you and I'm thinking, I really want to do something for this guy, but I've got to give Sheepy an out here if he thinks this is like biting off too much. Like I've got to give him the, because I say mm. yes to everything. You know, yeah, like, you do say Let's yes do that. That'd be awesome. But and I remember you looked at me and went, no, nah, we can do that. There's some pretty rewarding things you've done in that space, in that compression space. Yeah. Yeah. Along the line. I mean, I mean, I still get the odd message here and there in relation to that, but it was um, at the time. And I mean, I think, I think that started a whole lot of motivation for um, the medical fraternity to go look at alternatives and they went went off and yep. he asked us if we do and it wasn't what we wanted to do long term yeah but we you know we did make some really cool pieces for some really inspirational people yeah i mean i always try and take something away from everyone that comes in here mm. generally so there's been oh, some... i see you talking to them all nobody gets through without having a sheep report oh yeah no no i talk no oh, no they don't get past me <laughs> i mean there's been some right dicks uh, as we know but um yeah, that's in all avenues of yep. life but, but yeah. most of them are a pretty good. They've all got a story. How they get there, whether it's good or bad. Uh, no one, not many people, very few have a fa- fairly easy run with no. it. You don't get anywhere by doing nothing. No. So um, they've all. Every athlete's got a great story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some got a, some amazing stories. That I find it. Yeah, few people just how they've dealt with injuries or something major that's happened, and it's like nothing's happened. Mm. And I'm thinking, oh, I mean, I'd be crying like a banshee. <laughs> That'd be the end of me. And you've lost a finger or something's happened, and you, yeah. Like, wow, you know, so yeah, you see a lot. So it's really good. It's just a broad spectrum of people that come here now, you know, as we've changed over the time, but just, yeah, just learn from all of them. But um, yeah, a lot, lot of inspirational people come through here with great stories. So. And speaking of great stories, inspirational people, that back office that you run, you know, I'm not talking about the front office here, which has got all the hanging jerseys and stuff, the back office where, yep. you know, the heart of the business, because if that doesn't work, everything stops. Yep. You've got some really inspirational people out there. You've got yourself, you've even, you've led a couple of 10 years, 10 years through that yeah, project a few as well. Now. Like Gav, James. Josh, Atsko. Oh, Joshy, Atsko. Yep. For a small, like, we, what are we employed? 35 people, 40 people? You uh, think I'd know that, wouldn't you? No, I'm at 27 now at the moment. Oh, this, oh, this site, yeah, yeah well, I'm talking site. straight yeah. wide, but yeah, on this site. So in 27 people, you've mentored, what was that, five people through 10 plus years at Body Science yep. in that space where you've been like, oh, I've just got to congratulate you, yep. mate. That's awesome. We've had a few others have been quite high there as well. So obviously being when you're younger and you're a lot more cocky and Arrogant and we've got, and a, we've got our share of, um, I love the new young crew you brought through as well. They are epic. <laughs> yeah. uh, we took them out to drink to the footy the other night and you just, you know the part I love? Everybody just goes, I just love working at Body Science. It's, it's real. And yeah. when you look, when you when you dig down to what they're doing, they're getting orders pumped out and they're picking off the same shelves all day long. Mm. Yet they are absolutely the happiest crew, and yeah. I and I've got to congratulate you on that, mate, because you're you're that leader that they yeah, they're not always happy. <laughs> um, oh no, it's it's really hard, and it comes back to a management style, and no one gets this right. No one's one hundred percent at it, and not everyone's ever going to agree with you ever. And I don't care what anyone says; people are either going to love you or hate you, and that's just what it is. You do your best all the time. It can be very rewarding. A lot of the other times, you just shake your head and just think you just don't get it. But hey, that's you. And I know you do that to me a lot of the times and I do it back to you. So we've got that, you know, 
that's you going on there. But yeah, over time, you come up with your own management style. You have to recognise people's personalities. You have to recognise their strengths and their weaknesses, not get caught up in that, but use that. Well, not use that, but work with it. Work with it. Mm. And you know, and you, and you get the best out of people by recognising those things. Because if you're trying to make someone do something that they've got no interest in, they've got no skills in, nothing else, but they're great at something else and you're doing the opposite, well, you're not going to be successful in that role really. So it's a challenge every day and not everyone's going to be happy every day. We're human beings. We go up and down and everything else. I go up and down, I'm probably a little bit less now than I used to. The early days, you're always up, mate. <sighs> angry man no i wasn't uh, only at you really <laughs> um yeah so it's just a matter of you, you grow oh, you know to tell an angry story right now no, you're not, not telling you're not telling any no, angry stories yeah. um and we get <laughs> and we're getting older both of us are getting older we're starting to mellow you know you learn through your life you never stop learning i think that's the most important thing that's probably the most important thing that you've taught me you never stop learning and you've always got to continually work on yourself yeah, that's important. And I think understanding yourself or trying to who you really are, not who you think you are, that's a step in the right direction because until you recognise who you really are, you can't really work on yourself because yep. you can think you're an absolute hero, you're doing a great job and everything else. And that's one thing here I've never thought I'm doing a great job. So it's always, I feel there's the expectation that's never really overly told to me or anything else, but that's the bar that I've set. And I feel like, not that I'm underperforming, but I've got to ri rise to the occasion always. So I always feel like I've never completed it. I'm not at a hundred percent and I've always got to keep striving. So I don't take it for granted. So that's the one thing you can't take anything for granted because it's here one minute, gone the next. So the day that you do, you're over and out. So yeah. And so you do that with your team, I think to show that to your team, you've got to expose yourself every now and again, I suppose that way emotionally. And then, you know, that's, part of culture, building the culture. That's a big thing we've all worked on here at Body Science, obviously, is building that culture within the teams. And and I feel, and that's a that's always tough. You've got to show, you can't segregate, you, you've got to segregate yourself in certain terms because there's the professional aspect of it. But you've also got to be part of the team as well and show that you work with the team and you're no- You do lead from the front. I'll you're no, yeah. you're no greater than them. You're no better than them. And you've got to remind them every now and again to show that. And then they go, oh, okay, that's cool. you know. Yeah. And then next week they forget about it and you got to do it all again. But um, yeah, so things change over time. But yeah, management style and learning all those things and studying all the time and observing and, and all that kind of, it's part of the parcel really. Yeah. Well, mate, you, you've been an amazing person to work with over that journey. Definitely can say that we wouldn't have got to where we are without you. Thank you. That's something that I would say publicly all day long every day. You'd have more hair. Well, you know, maybe if you kicked in a bit earlier, I would have kept it, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but it's just been fun. I'm, I'm, and, you know, the Taji and Ash who run the podcast, who comes on, they really wanted to get you on to talk about the V10s and your journey mm. and, and celebrate what's happening right now because it is a really exciting time we launched mm. Compression Garment. Yeah, it is. So then they're available on bodyscience.com.au. Every single one of those that you buy continues Sheepy in his job role. So thank you for that, everybody. <laughs> Look, probably the thing to say right now is, mate, it's been really fun. Nathan and I have loved working with you and I'm we throw you spanners at sport and that's what i love about sport it's not it's not like you can't put sport in a box and ship it somewhere do you know what i mean it, no. it's it's custom it's got soul and heart and you have taken every journey from making a bobsled suit to making a burn suit yeah. to making specialized shorts for guys that you know like went just running athletes that needed help and yep. I really enjoyed what you've done and so some guy carrying a log yeah well there you know some people who want to do marathons with a log on their back and go yep. hey I'm getting butchered here can you help me yep. it's and you know that that's a recent job we've just done too. the fun things just always happen here it's not we're not yep. just picking stuff off a shelf and shipping it out which is no. what I love no and everyone gets rewarded too uh, we celebrate birthdays milestones make feel everyone feel inclusive so it just makes it a great place to work so um, you go to a lot of other people places and you know you just don't feel that love you know you know you go you know you could always be more and everyone says more but i think we do a fantastic job so good man well thanks mate thanks for coming on board no worries go back to work yeah i was about to say i gotta yeah, go back, to work. back Fuck, to work you've quick. helped me up yeah <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. If you want the V10s, they are available. Not if you want them, when you need them, which you do. They're available now on bodyscience.com.au. New legs, male and female. Get on board. Super comfy. Fantastic.